Good evening, Upscale. So, the etcd non-troller, as I'm gonna call it, is a distributed control plane for managing etcd. But, uh, just to get into a few questions you may have already, yes, this is working code, yes, this is available, GitHub link at the end. Sure, it's a bit of a pitch. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna debate the difference between operator and controllers. <laughs> no, what about ism is not a question. Yes, I can justify my pet project just as well as you can justify your pet project. <laughs> but first, we should talk about what etcd is. According to the website, etcd is a distributed value key store that provides a rel reliable way to store data across a cluster of machines. It's open source and available on GitHub. etcd gra gracefully handles leader elections during network partitions, tolerate machine failure, including the leader, communication happens over raft, consensus, yada, 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 yada. What they won't tell you is that the membership of etcd is expected to be handled outside of etcd. So how do you do this? There's a couple ways. You can do it manually if you want. Um, that's how a lot of people do it. You can run etcd admin from plan nine. It wraps systemd startup of etcd and incantations are abstracted away, simplifying them out or you can run the etcd operator, which is cool. It's software that's able to run in conjunction with the Kubernetes a API uh, to administer etcd clusters. You say, I want one, it gives you one. Kind of nice. And what's even best about etcd is that the Kubernetes control plane runs on etcd. Oh, sorry, the Kubernetes data store runs on etcd. So if you want to run etcd, just run Kubernetes so you can run etcd. You've just walked into a recursive problem. You know, you can build one cluster, your chicken cluster or your egg cluster, depending on where you start, um, to run your etcd operator so you can run your actual chicken cluster. So how do we get around this? Well, look at the etcd operator. It tells the Kubernetes API server to create the containers and administers them from there. It does this from outside the containers. The key to the non-troller is that we want to move that intelligence from the operator outside of that into something that's coupled directly with your etcd instances. Okay? This becomes your distributed system problem, but this is something that we're kind of used to dealing with around in the world of Kubernetes. So how do we move that? Well, we take a look at what the operator's really doing. It takes care of membership, uh, you know, observe, sorry, it observes membership via service discovery with Kubernetes API. It obtains resources from the Kubernetes API, and then it manages those etcd instances. If kube isn't there, we still need to do these, you know, a couple of these items, you know, outside of kube, but we can still use that intelligence to do the rest of it inside, okay? And I'll be honest, this is probably already done for us. If we take a look at the container world, you know, we're in a lot of ways saying, hey, I need X containers, right? This can be done from a Docker run command. This can be done from any of the container runtimes. Even in the Kubernetes world, there's a bootstrapping mechanism under the static manifest. So this is already there. You know, the resources have been inside of you the whole time. There we go. Um, Hand in hand with that goes the service discovery aspect. Okay, how do we know where we're running? How do we know uh, what we should connect to the cluster? Well, again, it's been there the whole time. You're probably already running some kind of service discovery mechanism, you know, in existing environments from console. You can leech off other items like AWS tags that are running on instances that will be running your Kubernetes cluster. Um, or you're probably maintaining inventory, spreadsheets, number one service discovery mechanism. So the meat of the operator is really about that intelligence of how do I run etcd. So the non-troller breaks this up into a conductor which handles which etcd, sh what sh etcd should be running and any additional commands which are given directly to etcd. And the second one is the driver, which is really taking all those invocations around etcd and rolling them all out. The key is that you get the same outcome between the operator and the non-troller. Even though this is one is not the Kubernetes way, you're still doing a lot of this the Kubernetes way, okay? So what I've said here is probably blasphemy to several people. You know, what, you need to get info from Kubernetes, that's the way. Yeah, spoiler, it's not. 
So don't be afraid to do something the wrong way because in, you know, in this old Irish saying that I just invented myself to fit on one slide, sometimes doing it the wrong way really tells you what the meat of the problem is and you can take it from there. Thank you.